Hey guys, Valentine's Day is just a few days away and one of my favorite things about this holiday are all the desserts. So I thought it'd be fun to come together with a few of my favorite food channels here on YouTube and bring you this playlist of Valentine's Day treats. And for my part, I'm gonna show you how to make a foolproof French macaroon. So I'm often asked, what is the difference between a macaroon and a French macaroon? Well, a macaroon is made with coconut and sweetened condensed milk, and sometimes you see them dipped in chocolate. In fact, we have a really great recipe on King Community that will show you how to make a traditional macaroon. A French macaroon, or a French macaron, as they're called, are something a lot different. In fact, these cookies are the hardest cookies to make, I have to be honest. However, I have come up with a foolproof recipe that if you follow my six tips, you cannot go wrong, and you too can master the French macaron. Here's how you do it. So the first step is, is you're gonna combine some almond meal and some powdered sugar. Now here comes tip number one. You wanna take this mixture and run it through a sieve with a spoon. The reason being is you wanna make sure that that mixture is as finely ground and powdery as possible. That is gonna give you that smooth, beautiful top to your macaroon and make your cookies really light. If you don't do this tip, you're gonna end up with a macaroon that's gonna have little bumps on the top of it and not look as pretty. So definitely take the time to do this step. You will find after you do this, you're gonna be left with some kind of whole pieces of almonds. That's okay. Those you can just put a little bowl to snack on because they're too big to actually work for the cookie. So the next step is we're going to beat our egg whites. Now here is tip number two. You wanna make sure that your egg whites are at room temperature. That is really critical for creating a really nice, fluffy, stiff peaked egg white. Now, if you set out on this recipe and you forgot to take the eggs out of the fridge to get to room temperature, you can create a room temperature egg by submerging them in warm water. Let them sit for about five minutes and you will have room temperature eggs. You're gonna combine your egg whites with a little bit of salt and some cream of tartar. You're then slowly gonna add your granulated sugar. Then it's time to add your food coloring. So because we're making these for Valentine's Day and we're making a raspberry buttercream filling, I like to add a little red food coloring. So here's tip number three. The food coloring does have a tendency to fade as your macaroon bakes. So you wanna take it maybe one or two drops past the desired color just to assure that you're gonna get the right color when your macaroons are actually baked and cooled. Now it's time to add the flour and sugar mixture to your egg white mixture. And this is where it can all go wrong. Because if you overmix, you're gonna end up with a macaroon that's flat and doesn't have the little ridges around it. And that is really the mark of a true macaroon. You wanna get the ridges. Those ridges are called feet. And if you get a macaroon that has feet on it, you have really succeeded. If you undermix, then you're gonna end up with a macaroon that cracks on the top of it, and that's also not good. So you wanna go somewhere in between, and you will know when you've reached the right consistency, when your batter doesn't have any more ridges in it, like you don't really see the bumps of the almonds, and it's still kind of viscous enough that it almost feels like molten lava, so you pull your spoon up and you can see it sort of still dripping down, that's when you wanna stop. You don't wanna take it any further than that. So that is really tip number four, the mixing. Do not overmix or do not undermix. You wanna be somewhere in between and that's when you'll get the ridges or the feet on the macaroon. This part does take some practice, I will be honest. It probably took me a few tries before I got to the point where I got my feet. That's the thing with the macaroon. They're beautiful, they're lovely, but they are finicky and it's just gonna take a little bit of practice. You're then gonna transfer your batter into a pastry bag that's fitted with a tip that's about a half an inch in diameter. You then wanna make sure you have two cookie sheets ready to go that are lined with parchment paper. I will say this, you really wanna go get the parchment paper. It's definitely better than trying to pipe these out on a cookie sheet that's been greased or sprayed with cooking spray. You don't wanna add any fat to these macaroons or your meringue will not work. So definitely go for the parchment paper. You're gonna pipe out one inch mounds and then here is tip number five. And this is a really good tip that you don't wanna miss. You wanna take those trays and bang them on your countertop just to release all the air. What I'll usually do is bang it on one side, flip the tray around, bang it on the other, and you will see, you'll start to see little air bubbles pop. That's what you want. Now for tip number six. And tip number six is another critical tip that it can all go wrong if you do not do this step. 
you wanna make sure that your macaroons sit out for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I know, you've come this far and you wanna throw them in the oven, but you really don't wanna do that because if you do, those macaroons are gonna spread out and they're gonna get flat and you're not gonna get those little ridges or the little feet if you do that. If you let them sit out for 30 minutes and they dry and start to get a little bit tacky, that is then going to help those macaroons rise up instead of spread out. When they rise up, they will get those little ridges and those little feet and you will have the true marking of a true macaroon. One other thing I will say before you bake these, I know that there are people that say put both trays in and then swap them out midway and then that way they'll bake evenly. I really don't think that's a good idea. Remember, these cookies are finicky and they don't like to be moved around. They kind of want the oven all to themselves and I give them that privilege. Remember, it's better to leave the tray to sit out anyway. So while you're baking one tray, the other tray can sit out, let it bake for 20 minutes and then swap them when they're done. Doing it this way, you'll end up with better formed cookies that have even heat throughout and will actually produce just a better, prettier cookie. While your cookies are baking, you can then get on with making the filling, the raspberry buttercream. I love this filling because it's a little bit tart. And I think with a cookie like this that's very sweet, it's a nice relief to add something that's tart in the center. Just adds for a nice counterbalance. In your mixer, you're gonna start to beat up about a half a stick of butter. You're gonna let that go just until it's really whipped up, almost five to seven minutes. You want it to be a nice, pale, fluffy white almost. Once your butter has reached a very pale yellow color, you're then slowly gonna add your sugar, whip that all up just until well incorporated, and then you can set it aside. Now, to create the raspberry flavoring, we're gonna take some fresh raspberries, put them back in your sieve, and take a nice large bowl and place that under it. You're then gonna work the raspberries through the sieve, pressing them up against the sides to extract their juice. Once you have about three tablespoons of raspberry juice, you can stop, but don't throw away those raspberries. They make for a great addition in your morning smoothie. So you can just pop those in the fridge. Then you're gonna add the raspberry juice to the butter mixture and whip it all up and you will see you will have a beautiful raspberry buttercream. You're then gonna take that mixture, put it in a pastry bag, fitted with a smaller tip, about a quarter of an inch in diameter. And then at this point, you're going to fill your shells. So you're gonna take all of those macaroon shells that you made, flip them over on their backs, and then pipe out about a half inch mound of filling. You're then gonna put the other shell on top and you will see you will have a beautiful French macaroon cookie. So there you have it, a foolproof recipe for French macaroons if you follow my six tips. So give it a try, let me know how that goes. I wanna make sure you guys get the same results that I did. I'm here to help if something goes wrong, so leave me a comment and let me know.